Hi, I'm Amelie Meyer, BMS Application Engineer, and today I'm going to present you the new high voltage battery management demo. Let's see how a battery would react while charging, driving, and recuperating using NXP's high voltage battery management system. First use case charging. The cells within all battery modules are partially empty, it is time to charge the battery. At this point, depending on their manufacturing and history, all cells inside each battery module have a slightly different remaining power. To be able to fully charge all cells in the battery pack, a cell balancing sequence is necessary. If charging was starting right away, the highest cell would reach the maximum limit way before the other cells and thus charging would need to be stopped to avoid overcharging. Before balancing the cells, the cell monitoring unit or CMU performs precise voltage measurements on each cell. These measurements are processed by the battery management unit or BMU which will indicate how to discharge the highest cells in order to get all of them to the same state of charge. Now balancing starts. The highest cells are discharged until they all reach a common level. NXP's battery cell controller will perform fast cell balancing on all the cells at the same time. This optimizes the cell balancing process and thus the charging time. Please note that the balancing of a battery does not necessarily have to be done while charging. This step can also be done while in idle state, for example, depending on the application. The cells inside the module are now balanced and charging starts. All the cells are charged starting from the same level and reach a 100% state of charge at the same time. This way, the module will utilize the cells better and store more energy. As a comparison, without cell balancing, all cells are charged at the same rate until a first cell reaches its maximum state of charge. Then, the charging process stops in order to avoid overcharging the fully charged cell, which could damage it or even cause safety issues. As a result, the battery is not completely charged, and the more unbalanced the cell were when charging started, the less charge can be stored into the battery. And by not using the full potential of the cells, the battery performance will decrease faster over time. Let's now go through the most important part, driving. While driving, the battery is used to power the electrical motors, enabling to drive without local CO2 emissions. The cells are discharging until one of them reaches its minimum charge level. The BMS regularly calculates the state of charge, or SOC, which corresponds to the range of the vehicle before needing to be charged again. As soon as one cell reaches its lowest charge limit, the whole battery cannot be discharged further and therefore the remaining range drops to zero. The car stops to avoid cell damage. The SOC computation is based on measurements done by the cell monitoring unit, also called CMU, and the battery junction box, also called BJB. An XP solution with high accuracy measurements provides a more precise SOC, corresponding to more autonomy and driving range. With less precise cell voltage measurements, a higher safety margin needs to be applied on the state of charge and the discharge must be stopped earlier, adversely affecting the driving range. Additionally, the high accuracy measurements that NXP's BMS provide allow to reduce the safety margin for the cell lower charge limit. Since measurements are very precise and their integrity is fully monitored by NXP's safety protocols, it is possible to discharge the battery closer to its minimum operating limit. So more energy can be put to work, extending the vehicle's range. Without certainty about the battery's state of charge calculated using precise measurements, even if there is still some remaining power inside the battery, it cannot be further discharged to avoid damage. This, again, results in a reduction of the driving range. And we reach now the final use case, which is recuperation. 
While driving, the battery either powers the motors or recuperates energy. These power exchanges can lead to significant heat dissipation. A lot of energy is quickly drawn from and put back into the battery, which can lead to a significant temperature increase of the battery cells. As lithium-ion batteries are very sensitive to heat, it is important to monitor both their temperature as well as the surrounding temperature. This way, safe operation is ensured and performance and longevity are improved. The recuperation power is limited by the electrical and thermal limits of the battery system. An XPS BMS monitors with high accuracy the battery conditions in order to maximize the amount of energy recovered and increase the vehicle's efficiency and range. Besides the accurate monitoring of several temperature points inside the battery, an XPS solution also enables precise battery internal pressure measurements, helping to rapidly detect any thermal runaway. All of this precise measurement information is provided to the battery management unit, where it contributes to informed decisions that ensure battery safety and improve performances. Without multiple and precise temperature measurement points, the safety relevant risk of undetected battery overheating cannot be excluded and thus performance is compromised. All right, now that we have seen how NXP's BMS can improve performances and safety, let's have a deeper look to see how it is structured. NXP's BMS is composed of three modules, a battery management unit, or BMU, a cell monitoring unit, or CMU, and a battery junction box, or BJB. The first one is the battery management unit, which is the control part of the BMS. It collects and post-processes all the BMS data, makes decisions, and commands the system while ensuring its safety. Its main components are the S42K3 microcontroller, which is an ACLD-ready ARM-based microcontroller, the FS26, a system basis chip or SPC, which is a power management chip, as well as a safety companion to the S42K3 microcontroller, helping to reach an ACLD system, a MC3366X, which is a gateway, allowing a two-wire isolated communication to both the BJB and the CMU boards, with loopback and up to 2 Mbps. A TDA1145A, can physical layer to communicate with the car's main controlling system. A pressure sensor to measure the internal pressure of the battery. A real-time clock, which could be an ultra-low power and highly accurate PCA2129. And finally, a contactor driver, commanding the inverter and the charger contactors. NXP provides very performant devices for all of these components. I invite you to visit nxp.com to learn more about them. Let's now go over the cell monitoring unit. The cell monitoring unit is the cell sensing part of the BMS. It measures and monitors cell voltages and environmental temperatures to ensure proper battery operation and enables precise cell balancing. Its main component is the new MC33775 battery cell controller, also called BCC, allowing to accurately measure and monitor up to 14 cells and HGPIOs, or temperature sensor inputs. It is designed to support ISO 26262 and support up to ACLD safety systems. The last module of the architecture is the BJB. The battery junction box is the pack level sensing part of the BMS. It measures high voltages, current, and monitors a proper connection of the contactors to the inverter and the charger by measuring high voltages. Its main components are two battery sensors, which are called MC33772. They are duplicated for redundancy and they both very accurately measure the system's current. They also monitor the contactor state by measuring high voltages throughout the architecture and measure several temperatures, including the shunt temperature using their seven GPIO bars. And finishing this NXP's BMS architecture overview, we now need to talk about the system level. All these elements are combined into one battery management system, gathering high precision, ACLD functional safety, and scalability for all types of applications. 
And it is important to note that we also enable our customers to build excellent solutions through a broad support system, including functional safety support with key reference deliverables, production-ready software development support, and hardware development support with reference designs. We are now reaching the end of our virtual high-voltage PMS demo. Please feel free to visit the virtual demo by yourself and find further information at nxp.com PMS. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Bye.